Rafah operations started last month. You're well aware of that. And Israel is progressing as per schedule. Now, what the US has done is, US has also come in for a lot of domestic criticism, especially from senior political sources or senior political uh, figures and, 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 you know, those people who are saying that there is too much of killing happening in Gaza. US stopped a shipment of bombs that were supposed to go to Israel. But, and I failed to understand the duplicity of the Americans. Used in Gaza, of course, it's going to be used in Gaza. Where else? America has got a very long history of ditching its allies. If tomorrow the Russians want to hit Kiev, they'll hit Kiev. But if Zelensky wants to hit Moscow, he will never be allowed to hit Moscow. Jain friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. The relationship between America and Israel, perhaps the closest strategic partnership or even at an emotional level, even at a, at a historical level, now seems to be fraying at the seams. Something is not right. And there are two things that have happened. Normally, these countries will have their differences of opinions. In fact, Israeli spies have been caught in the US and the US spies have been caught in Israel. They keep on spying on each other, but they're the closest of allies, the closest of buddies. But they've never gone public with their disagreement. Now, this is the first time that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu went public with his disagreement on the United States and the US responded by cancelling a very important meeting. Uh, uh, it was not technically a cancellation, but they downgraded it. I'm going to discuss this today. Why is all this happening? Is there too much of pressure? Because suddenly, uh, you know, you have Canada jumping in the fray. And there are various facets to this entire geopolitical things that are happening. Now, let me take it, uh, you know, one by one, step by step. The first thing is that uh, you're well aware that approximately 3.8 billion sometimes 3.5 billion, uh, is the military aid given to Israel by the United States of America every single year. Now, when I say aid, this is not a purchase, this is not a loan, this is simply this much of weapons and equipment that are given to Israel every single year. Over and above this, if Israel wishes to buy, then it is given the top class technology that Israel needs. You know, America will give Israel anything, but 3.5 to 3.8 billion dollars is something that they give Israel every year. It's a gift. It's a gift and there is no expectation of return. Now, in case of war, what happens is that there is a lot of damage to weapon and equipment. Wars are horribly expensive horribly expensive and billions and billions of dollars are spent and nobody's counting pennies when there is a war. War is war and then you put everything, your effort, your money, your credibility, your diplomatic sources, everything into that war because you've got to win. This is uh, the dilemma that Israel is faced with. Israel is facing off against the Hezbollah, against Hamas, both of them proxies of, uh, you know, Iran, also the Houthis, also half a dozen other terror organizations which are essentially proxies of Iran. There has been a tactical pause in Gaza, which does not mean that fighting has stopped in Gaza. There is a tactical pause for a certain time of the day so that aid can come inside Gaza. That is one. Number two, uh, Rafah operations started last month. You are well aware of that and Israel is progressing as per schedule. Now, what the US has done is, US has also come in for a lot of domestic criticism, especially from senior political sources or senior political uh, figures and, 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 you know, those people who are saying that there is too much of killing happening in Gaza and the US is aiding and abetting that killing, so it must stop. So, what the US did is, US stopped a shipment of bombs that were supposed to go to Israel, but it did not stop the complete shipment of other weapons and equipment and it's saying that well other weapon and equipment can go to Israel but these bombs hold on for a while. The US has promised Israel and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the specifics in a bit. They've uh, uh, you know told Israel that we are working day and night to remove these impediments and you will get the bombs just give us a little while longer. Now uh, Israeli PM Netanyahu has criticized US for blocking the weapons because of its use in Gaza. 
but they're giving Israel other equipment. And I fail to understand the duplicity of the Americans. Use in Gaza, of course, it's going to be used in Gaza. Where else? I mean, you are giving them other weapons and you're saying that's fine. A guy who's dead doesn't care how he, how he died, you know, whether it's a bullet or a bomb. So America needs to be very clear. Is it giving weapons to Israel or it is not giving weapons to Israel? And America has got a very long history of ditching its allies. I've said this many times and the Americans have got back saying that, no, 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 Major, maybe you don't understand the context. There is no context. If you're a friend, you're a friend. If you're not a friend, you're not a friend. They did the same to the Afghans in Afghanistan. They said, fight the Taliban. Don't worry. When this war is over, we'll take you to the United States. And you're going to have this fancy house in the suburbs with a white picket fence. They sold all these dreams to the Afghans. And then you saw those images of Afghans hanging by the tires and falling from the sky and dying. You've all seen those images, right? That is America for you. Today, Zelensky is running from pillar to post wanting peace. Let's have, let's have a huge peace conference in Switzerland. Let's invite more than 90 countries. Let's invite India, let's invite this, let's invite that. And let's finally have a system together by which people pressurize Russia for peace. Why is Zelensky doing that? Russia never had a peace conference. Zelensky has a peace conference. Why? Because he knows that the Americans are ditching him. The Americans, after telling Zelensky to fight till the death, the Americans have slowly and slowly, you know, the, those funds are now coming in a trickle. They're coming in a trickle. And there are many ifs and buts. The NATO countries which are giving arms and ammunition to Ukraine are saying, no, you can't hit deep within Russia. You can only hit in the occupied territories. You can only hit, uh, you know, uh, let's call it shallow. You know, the hit should be shallow. It can't be deep. So that is what they're saying. And Zelensky does not know what to do because if tomorrow the Russians want to hit Kiev, they'll hit Kiev. But if Zelensky wants to hit Moscow, he will never be allowed to hit Moscow. I'm not saying he can or he cannot. He will not be permitted by the West. So this is it. Now, the, when, when Netanyahu says it is inconceivable that those arms and ammunition have been withheld, and America should not withhold because this is America's closest ally fighting for its life. These are the exact words of Benjamin Netanyahu, and I'm going to show you a small video after which I'll come back. When Secretary Blinken was recently here in Israel, we had a candid conversation. I said I deeply appreciated the support the U.S. has given Israel from the beginning of the war. But I also said something else. I said it's inconceivable that in the past few months, the administration has been withholding weapons and ammunition to Israel. Israel, America's closest ally, fighting for its life, fighting against Iran and our other common enemies. Secretary Blinken assured me that the administration is working day and night to remove these bottlenecks. I certainly hope that's the case. It should be the case. During World War II, Churchill told the United States, give us the tools, we'll do the job. And I say, give us the tools and we'll finish the job a lot faster. So Benjamin Netanyahu says, we are your closest allies. We are fighting for our lives. Why are you withholding weapons? And then the White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, confirms that there is an ongoing pause regarding a particular shipment of bombs. But she insists that no other weapons are being withheld. And then, you know, responding to what Netanyahu said, she says, we genuinely do not know what he's talking about. You don't know what he's talking about. He's talking about those bombs that you withheld. That's what he's talking about. It's not so tough. So, Secretary Blinken, this is Netanyahu saying that Secretary Blinken assured me that the administration is working day and night to remove these bottlenecks. Now, what are these bottlenecks? Who put these bottlenecks? One American department will put the bottleneck on another American department and the Americans will make it sound like some other country has invaded them. This is America trying to exert pressure on the Israelis. That is it. That is it. Last month, the U.S. paused its first munitions delivery to Israel, delaying thousands of bombs. And the U.S. supplies 3.8 billion. Sometimes I've read 3.5, 3.8. This is 3.8. But, and hold on to your breaths, ladies and gentlemen, recently passed a $14 billion support bill to Israel. A $14 billion support bill. 
And despite the pause of bombs, this is American duplicity. Despite the pause of bombs, uh, the Biden administration plans to sell Israel 50-50 F-15 fighter jets worth over 18 billion. And this is as per reported by the as reported by the American media. So you can imagine. On one hand, they are stopping bombs. On the other hand, they are selling F-15s. What do they think? Where, 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 where do you think the Israelis were going to use those F-15s? Or will use those F-15s? In Mongolia? Or China? Where? Now, the US has cancelled a strategic meeting with Israel. Not cancelled, but they've sort of downgraded it. Uh, essentially, after Benjamin Netanyahu criticized uh, President Joe Biden's administration for delaying arms shipment to Israel, the meeting was set to take place in Washington on Thursday and was set to focus primarily on the progress of Iran's nuclear program. Talking about Iran, Canada has just declared the Islamic Revolutionary Guards a terrorist organization. This is the latest news for you. Canada has said this is a terror organization. Instead of the delegation that was supposed to travel to Washington, led by Strategic Affairs Minister Ron Derma, there will only be a meeting between National Security Council head Zashi Hanegbi and U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. So, essentially what is happening is that there's this huge meeting that was supposed to happen. An entire delegation goes to discuss what is happening in Iran and how to counter Iran. And suddenly, America has downgraded this entire meeting and now it's just going to be one-to-one. -one. So, one guy from Israel goes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the question and answers, Amrendra Bhaumik says, Dear Major, USA, you have ganged up against India to decrease trade deficit. Arguing on your line, this is justified. You have carefully avoided the fact that NATO is expanding on the east against the spirit of 1991 verbal, verbal agreement between NATO and USSR. Amrendra Bhaumik ji, thank you very much for writing to me. And uh, nobody has ganged up against India. I think this mindset needs to go. Nobody is ganging up against anybody. Countries work on their interest and we should be prepared. As I'm very fond of saying and I've said it very often, there is a difference between love affairs and foreign affairs. Right? Do not expect the world to come to your doorstep every time because you want them to. It will not happen. So I don't subscribe to the theory. And NATO is expanding. You have carefully avoided the fact that NATO is expanding east against the spirit of the 1991 verbal agreement between NATO and USSR. No. In fact, I think, Amrendra Bhaumik ji, uh, you should see my videos. Almost in every second, third video, I am saying that Russia should not have attacked. But yes, Russia was given a justification because they were putting NATO, you know, in Ukraine. So when NATO joins Ukraine, obviously there will be weapons and equipment. I have said this more than 15, 20 times. I have not avoided it. I have said it. Attacking Ukraine is wrong. But then Russia was given the justification of NATO. This I have mentioned I don't know how many times. I don't know how many times. Abhay says Modi wants Bharat back. Why Putin cannot get Russia glory back? So there are two things. First of all, when we ask for Gilgit Baltistan and POK back, that is because our parliament says so. That was the region that was taken away from India, right? And it was taken by Pakistan through means that were illegal. That is occupied territory. But let me tell you, when you say why Putin can't get Russian glory back, Russia, even before Putin was the head of state, recognized Ukraine as a separate country. They had their embassies there. Kazakhstan is a separate country. They recognize their embassies. And they have their embassies in, in, in each other's countries. So, you know, you can't recognize a country as a separate entity and then say, we'll invade you and get your territory back. These are not the times of Chinggis Khan where you'll go to a country and solo up the whole country. It doesn't happen like that. You cannot compare both the cases. India's case and Russia's case are totally different. Kashmir takes his name from Rishi Kashyap. That has been our land even before the world knew of both Ukraine and Russia. Before Russia existed and Ukraine existed, there was Bharat. And Kashmir has been our Abhinang since those days. We are talking 5,000 years and more. Mahi Mahesh Babu says, Do you think if China attacks Taiwan, US gets involved, will they seek India's help to launch attack on China like creating a base in India? No, I don't think that they will seek, they might seek a base in India, which India will refuse anyway. 
So giving foreign bases is something that Pakistan does. India does not do any of that nonsense, but yes. Will they ask India to get aggressive on China? 100%. And I think India should get aggressive even before somebody asks. Why should somebody ask us? And why should we do somebody else's bidding? If we know that China has attacked Taiwan, we should start hammering China on two fronts. Number one, the sea lanes, the famous Malacca choke. And number two, in the Himalayas. Because China, is, China knows this. It's not that China is oblivious to this threat. China knows very well that it's going to get hammered. So ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have for you today. And I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please press the like button. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind. Vande Matram. Bharat Mata Ki Jai.